Oh my gosh, we have to fix that sign. Hey guys, welcome back to Popcorn in Bed. Thank you as always for being here. I'm so happy you're here. Um, I finished episode six of Masters of the Air and this is one that I immediately wanted to start watching. We just had such a good ending. Well, definitely bittersweet ending. I mean, yes, he's walking into a concentration camp, but like to see those familiar faces, it seems like they're transitioning to um, Rosie Rosenthal, which I'm I'm happy. I really like him as a character, but I also want to keep continuing to see their story. It's so cool to watch these stories play out. Although it's hard, it, it's it's weird to be excited about watching the show, but it's also just like so good. I can't stop telling people about it. And I'm like, it's the same people as Band of Brothers in Pacific. You have to watch it. It's about the side of the air. Someone said that it's I don't know if it's the exact same or just like same place or style as the uh, POW camp in The Great Escape, which is crazy because in that one, I'm like, the Germans, they, they should be meaner to the <laughs> last one was so the scene when they were taking the prisoners through town, like, and I read about that after and I know it wasn't actually Bucky's experience, but it actually did happen. And I mean, to see mothers pulling their kids out of the rubble in England and then later in Germany. It's just war is like, anyways. Okay, so let's continue watching. I might just binge it all right now. We'll see. Okay, don't forget Patreon, bell, like and subscribe. <sighs> Please no. Stalaglov 3 was run by the German Air Force. And because we had their downed pilots in our camps, they treated our boys humanely enough. Their diet consisted of potatoes and turnips year-round. All they really wanted was news from the front to give them hope they would be going home. Any word on the mail? Nope. How long have they been here? Spare some water? What did you say was in the soup? He didn't. Rabbit? And lots of stray rabbits running around under our combine. Use the bucket. It's protein. The only kind we're gonna get until those Red Cross parcels show up. <gasps> They're a radio. It's nothing good. Grass is here. The Brits tried an attack on Monte Cassino. We want expectations among the men to be realistic. All right, fellas, let's go. What the heck? What are they doing? What? 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 Cleaning checks? What? In the Great Escape, it said it was almost like their duty and like to escape or try to escape, and and they wanted them. They just expected them to try and plan it. Can you not find Oh no. I didn't get the headphone. Well, thank God for small miracles. Oh, I feel like I couldn't breathe. It's crazy that, you know, how hard it was for them to go on these missions every day and risk their lives. And now that they're at this camp, I bet what they wouldn't give to get in a plane with their freedom. It was understood in early 1944 the invasion of Europe was imminent. The 100th Bomb Group would play its part. More missions into Germany meant more casualties. Because every one of us had lost at least one close friend, some guys were reluctant to get to know the new fellas. Most of them weren't expected to be around very long. But someone had to show them the ropes. I'm Captain Robert Rosenthal. I'm a pilot with the 418th. Good to have you guys here. Nothing gave us more hope than the return of men we thought were lost. Aww. Lucky for them, there was a rule that if a downed flyer made it out of occupied Europe, he wasn't allowed to fly any more missions. Because if a flyer got shot down again and was captured or tortured by the Gestapo, they knew too much about the escape routes and the French and Belgian men and women who had assisted them. The lucky bastards got a ticket home. They did make it. The time will come, Carlos. That's the problem of being kicked up to operate. You hardly ever get a chance to fly. Oh, he's the best pilot I've ever seen fly a B-17. Ever. You pray to God you can fly half as good as him, you might make it a 25-2. Better than Buck? Now, when I was a kid, I built a homemade crystal radio. I'm thinking of giving it a try in here. Won't be as good as our old one, but copper wire, graphite, safety pin. You think you could scratch him up for me? Oh, my little Cree Marconi, huh? <laughs> so I can rustle up. <laughs> Jeez. 
It's gotta be Berlin, right? It's hard to pinpoint from the AA fire. Sounds like they sent a flak up from half of Germany. There we go. Sounds about right. It's Berlin or it's environs. You hear that? <laughs> it's Berlin. <laughs> As our missions piled up and became more perilous, it seemed that that damn red mission light never blinked off. I can't imagine what that does to your nervous system. There. There! I got him! Four, five, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I just have full body goosebumps. It's fifteen down. Wait. I thought that was good. Ooh. I thought that was good. <laughs> oh, oh. oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. March 6th, 1944 became known as Black Monday because of how many men were lost that day. 150 of them were from the 100th. They took a direct hit in the cockpit. Monty and Kinsella must have been killed instantly. At least I hope for their sake they were. Their ship went totally out of control. Headed straight up, right for the high element. Harrison had to take evasive maneuvers not to get hit by it. They killed them all, every last one of them. As our crews got younger, our casualties climbed and the morale on base plummeted. We all needed to distract ourselves from the war. I decided to call Sandra, told myself all I wanted was someone to drink and laugh with, but then I called her a second time, and a third. <laughs> Crap, things feel very bad right now. If anyone could do it, Buck can. Here's yours from Buck. Marge. Marge. Last letter I sent before Brown and I popped the question. She said yes. <sighs> so? That's great. Congratulations. I was even thinking maybe you'd be my best man. I will be your best man. That's something to hope for. It must just seem like the war is never gonna end though. You know? To have no idea. Oh, your son. Is he still at it? He's got a few more to write, sir. Tomorrow's mission. Berlin again? Jack, it's the same route. Exactly like yesterday. They don't care if they kill us all, do they? <laughs> what do you say if you and I, we made our move? The odds of getting out of here alive and in one piece is 30 to 1, 40 to 1, 51. I don't have a plan yet, but I'll find one. Maybe you should come up with one with better odds. My plan is to get home to Mars in one piece. Why well, you die here? And we can wait here doing nothing. Guys, that what you uh, do? No, I, don't I can't know. stand this place any more than you. We need a boost. Now, for those of you unaware, I'm Lieutenant Colonel Bennett, the new CEO of the 349th Squadron. What happened to the other guy? Colonel Hardin's trip to London this morning. I've been placed in temporary command of the entire 100th Bomb Group. The target for today is Berlin, specifically the Erkner Ball Bearing Plant. Jesus, that's the exact same route as Monday. Who said that? Major Jones? You're exactly right. But I am not a man to order anyone on any mission I won't fly myself, so I will be command pilot for the entire wing. But how does that make a difference, though? We only had 15 planes left to send up. The exact same number the Germans shot down two days earlier. It didn't take just... a mathematician to figure out the odds. We're pretty back and back from their 25th mission. Our chances of defeating the Luftwaffe were increased by the introduction of the P-51 Mustang. Hands down, the best fighter plane of the war. Yes. Yes. Escorted by the Mustangs for the entire mission, the odds were starting to shift in our favor. There's a whole lot of fighters at two o'clock level. Can anyone ID these fighters? Over. They're crowds! How do we know? Ah, I can't get a shot at them! Roger. I see P-51s coming in to help. Ball third to pilot. I have green, green flares from Colonel Bennett's ship. Over. We're over Berlin, but I think we missed our turn for the IP. We have fighters at 11 o'clock. Jeez, this seems a lot. Get ready, boys. There's a lot of those at 11 o'clock. Gosh! Look at that! How do you know who you're firing at? That's a lot of bombs. Holy crap. 14-1 down! 
anyone seen us down? Or seen Rosie? How could you possibly see? We did it. Captain. 25. We're going home. Us that much? Jackie, all right? <laughs> Brass is upping the end of tour requirements from 25 to 30 missions. Are you serious? What? No. Only for new replacement crews coming after next week. Any crew in between will have to make 28. You and your boys are off the hook, Rosie. Congratulations, Rosie. At least you'll make it out of this fing war alive. Changing the rules on us mid game? That's bullshit, Jack. They want us all to die up there, and no one gives a shit. I have missed you terribly, and I just want to know where you've been. He can't tell her. She can't tell her. Do you want to know where I've been? Or do you want to know where I will be? In 20 minutes. 20 minutes? It's Crosby's book, right? I wonder if he wrote this. Maybe there's some glue residue or oil or dirt or something getting in the way of the <gasps> current. Light bulb. I think. Yeah. Yeah, I got something. The repeated strikes on Berlin took a tremendous toll on the 100th. It had become clear that it was no longer enough just to drop bombs on our target. We had to completely destroy the German Luftwaffe. My friend Rosie understood this very well, but he had completed his 25th mission. He had done his duty, and now he could go home. March 24th, 1944. March 24th, March 24th. Crap, I can't remember when they came in. It's the news, boys. Brits in North Compound built three tunnels. Jesus Christ, how? Yeah. I've been digging them for over a year. 30 feet deep, so the goon seismographs would detect them. <gasps> 70, maybe 80 men made it out. 80? Colonel believes there'll be severe reprisals. They're gonna take it out on them, you think? Commandant von Lindeiner has been relieved of all duties. Most of the escapees have been recaptured. But I regret to inform you that 50 of the recaptured escapees have been executed. I would caution you not to allow your men to enact any reprisals or to make any, any attempt to escape in the future. There are orders for me to take an inventory of all Jewish prisoners of war at Stalag Luft 3. There are only Americans in Stalag Luft 3, Major Simulite. There are ongoing discussions in Berlin to transfer all Stalags in the Reich. Outcome I think we would all like to avoid, yes? Your good behavior would be very much appreciated. Uh, so what do you think the odds are now? Of us making it home alive? Long. They're okay, right? How did they get mail? Does this mean, like, do they know? Do these guys know back at the base that mm -hmm. Buck and Bucky are... Captain, you know the tours of duty have been extended to 30 missions. Yes, sir, I do. He's re-enlisting. I can't stop you, Captain, but don't you want to go home? And Jesus, if anyone's on a trip to Florida, it's you. He doesn't want to leave them behind. How could I sleep at night knowing I get to go home while the brass up their numbers mid-tour? I can't imagine some rookie coming to take my place getting himself and his crew killed on their first mission, and he gets replaced by another replacement and over and over and over again. Nah, no, sir. Not until the job is done, one way or another. He's so brave. General Doolittle has ordered the air strategy to shift radically. The invasion will not and cannot occur until the Luftwaffe is destroyed, and we have complete and total air superiority. Now with the new P-51s, which outflies and outperforms every plane the Luftwaffe can throw at us. But to shoot them down, we need to get them in the air as bombers as the bait. Our bombers. So that's the strategy. Bait. I understand. It's like they just become numbers. Every life is just a number because they're like, okay, maybe we lose a hundred guys, but we mm -hmm. can take down this many planes and that's okay mm -hmm. because that... New commanding officer for the 350th. You up for it? Yeah, I'm up for it. Okay then. Thank you, Carl. If he dies. Uh, okay, every episode of the show, my heart is like this, and my tears are just so close all the time. Just one little look or word or anything can just, it's just real. This was real. It's unimaginable. Being in the prison of war camp, to try and stay optimistic, to have any hope or no clue what's going on. It's unimaginable to think that any day could be your last, and, and very probable that any day is your last. I feel like the brass they talk about, or like, I know that guy flew with them, the, the CO, but I feel like the guys calling the shots should come down there and see them, talk to them, 
get their ideas and strategies. I don't know. Looks like we're going to see an episode of the British girl. I don't know her name that Crosby's sleeping with. And she's like a spy. And that will be very uh, suspenseful and thrilling, I'm guessing. So I'm just going to watch another one. Because I can't stop. While the 8th Air Force was hitting the Germans from bases in England, 15th Air Force was striking at them from bases in Italy. The 99th Pursuit Squadron was part of that effort. They were known as the Tuskegee Airmen. Tuskegee. I would say Tuskegee. Tuskegee. Prepare final approach. Come in the ring. Bombs away. Seven direct to the structure. I'd log that as a direct hit. So they... They're bombing from just tiny little planes. And that's the new part of this. I'm just coming to congratulate you. Fine work out there. You're a clever fella, Alex. But don't let smart be the enemy of half. No, sir. He's up, he's up again. I'm extremely proud of what we've accomplished, but when are we gonna get into some heavier action? There is some talk of us joining up with the 332nd fighter group. The 96th is doing a Fajr a few days from now. We're gonna fly our first mission over Germany. P-40s can't handle that type of altitude. P-51s, just be patient. In the meantime, relax. It's just hard when, when some of our guys are already out there. You didn't wash out, Alex. Everything in its own order. Rivers, curveball, big swing and a miss from Keller for strike two! Uh-oh. You okay, Major? Yeah. Why wouldn't I be okay? I've been here for eight months now. Eight still months? Still trapped, still cold, still eating scraps. And we keep waiting for something to happen. It could be worse. We could be dead. At least that I could stand. He's losing his mind. We all think something's gonna happen. Maybe we need to make it happen. Like those Brits did. We have to be patient. 5.56 to 5.57 a.m. on June 3rd, 1944. Three days to D-Day. Oh my gosh. D-Day Our job was to bomb yet. the German defenses in Normandy. Why did I not put that together? together? Spend the day hitting German bridges, railroads, and communication lines further inland. D-Day hasn't even mm -hmm. happened yet. I tried contacting Sandra whenever I had a break. Couldn't reach her. It was like she vanished. Thirty-two hours. The second afternoon of the uh, second day. How long is after D-Day? A long time. Sixty hours. Your mind starts playing tricks on you. Come on, you can hear it. It's the tick, tick, tick. Just as I'd finished mapping the route for one mission, operations handed down five more, all high priority targets. There's gotta be someone else who can help him. Good job. We received some news. Jean will brief you on your assignment. 64 hours. You just try to survive, breath by breath, step by step. You have to go to sleep. No, 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 no I'm fine. Brief go you. to bed, Cross. That's an order. Now! I can't do it, Jack. Just a couple more things. I gotta get going. D-Day. For those of you who've seen this month for the first time, We're a few hours away from the invasion of Europe. <laughs> Last words of wisdom, sir. No, no, I don't have any last words because I'm gonna see you again. Skins can be the uh, the away team. Actually, no, no, we're all away. They're Come pitching in. or knock it off. Shut the hell up. What the hell's wrong? Oh crap! Come on, get up. Get back to work. No, me. Get off. Guys. Get in! Get in! Get in. Hey! What's going on? They landed, didn't they? Go to the We're radio. Western Europe. There's still time! Pants, damn it! Pants! Pants! For the hell of my pants! <laughs> 7.30 Saturday morning, Cross. Oh, what I meant. Three sorties, but I couldn't see anything. And then the clouds parted. <gasps> Hundreds of ships, so the Germans weren't able to bring up any reinforcements. That's the beach. All from the routes you plotted, Harry. I just can't believe I missed it. Two months after D-Day. We need to make more weapons, whatever we can. There's one other scenario. They force march us out of here before the Ruskies can set us free. Move us somewhere deeper in the Reich, see? No, let's not talk about that. We need to start preparing now. Conserving rations, getting them in its shape. Everything we do from this point on needs to be to prepare for all three scenarios. Execution, forced march, or pitched battle. Gentlemen, you're going to France. Stand up! 
Oh, it almost scares me that this is the second to last episode. There's so much we need to get done still. German radar detection systems are mounted all along here. We are gonna take them all out, phased, aggressive strafing run. Toulon is 473.51 miles away, and that is 947.2 miles round trip. And the maximum fuel range is only 999.8 miles. And if we kick the tanks after the run, that'll drop us a couple thousand pounds. We'll still fall hundreds of miles short, sir. This is gonna be close, but it's not impossible. Hundreds of miles mm -hmm. short. We're gonna give you IDs, so if the Germans don't get you as soon as you land, you can be somebody else, and you might be able to blend in with the population. You can love blending in. <laughs> Are we Tuskegee men or what? Sir, yes, sir! Can we get this job done? Sir, yes, sir! Oh my gosh. They're literally sending them on a mission expecting them to drop not home. All right, man, kick your tanks. Copy that, Lieutenant Macon. What's going on with your tanks, Westbrook? I said drop. Tanks won't drop. All right, Westbrook. I'm with you. We ain't gonna leave you, kid. Kick. Watch me. Come on. Kick. You punch it hard enough, kid. Come on. I am punching it. Couldn't it be a mechanical thing then? That... Got it. That's it. Hey, bro. Nice work, kid. Qualifier. We know we're coming. Holy cow. Go high. Oh, wow. When I saw that. In the intro, I thought it was a plane nose diving like to its death, but ah, Westbrook, you gotta bail, bail! Holy crap, that's close. No going down! Bail, bail! No, you're gonna pay for that! Told you I saw another shoot. They got your O2, huh? Who's that? Second Lieutenant Alexander Jefferson. Went down about 30 miles away. Looks like you in bad shape. No, 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 no. Every time I move, I pass out. This is... You must have hurt your neck. <clears throat> Let's see what we can do for you. Where are they? They just put them in a barn? The moment our boys landed in France, the order went out. All POW camps run by SS. Seems like that would require a lot of them. We gotta get these guys ready to fight. There's no telling what these crowds will do. But that stump remover, that's a solution. It'll build the strength we need to resist. We tell them we're after the wood, stocking up for winter. Plus extra wood, extra weapon. <sighs> I have to thank you. Another these are my favorite. Ta-da! <laughs> How are things in the States? Alexander Jefferson, 2nd Lieutenant, 0819461. I feel as if I already understand you. They're trying to do the good cop thing and... What was your target that day? Richard D. Megan, 2nd Lieutenant, 0821916. How did you hurt your neck? 2nd Lieutenant, 0821916. What's the place in Los Angeles where all you blacks are forced to live? It's Watts. Watts. I'm familiar with those places. Oh my gosh. Why do you fight for a country who treats you like that? You want to talk about how to treat people? Do you know any other country that's better? Well, my country sure comes up. And I know it's trying hard to become what it says it's supposed to be. And when I get back, I'm going to help them do that a lot faster. Oh, no. hey. They're going to be able to tell them what's going on. They've got news, right? All these new guys, they can tell you what's going on. That must be exciting. Second Lieutenant Alexander Jefferson, 332nd Fighter Group. Second Lieutenant Richard D. Megan. Welcome to paradise. <laughs> you playing Murphy? No, not this guy. Guys. You're getting a month off. I'm sorry to ask this, sir, but is this my choice? We need you functional. You're too important to us. Uh, I'm telling you, it could work. Ride until it's empty, then we hike from there. They need to <laughs> communicate. You flew P-51s, P-39s. You know, I, I started out wanting to be a fighter pilot. I ended up falling in love with the big birds. I've been building model planes since I was a kid. You know, my absolute masterpiece, the Supermarine Spitfire. What are you reading there? A uh, story about an artist. He sacrifices everything to pursue his passion. He looks so, he looks like he's lost so much weight. You draw this? Yes, sir. Is this the scale? Uh, more or less. No elevation, though. And yeah, we could use your help. And we could use yours. There's a group of us figuring out next moves, running scenarios. We can't just stay sitting ducks. Notice the new and improved super goons around? I got a plan for that. What would you need me to do? We need help charting the area to get out of here. Back on that first day, all the guys looked to you. 
You got the final say. Why didn't you gripe about us bunking an eight? Well, let's just say I at least knew you weren't spies. Gail Clevin, Major, 100 Palm Group. Everybody calls me Buck. Second Lieutenant Alexander Jefferson, 332nd Fighter Group. Oh, I was hoping Buck would do this. You hand over the papers, immediately grab the red. Here, or here. Knock him clean out. Go straight into the neck, okay? And then you're gonna push it forward. What? Oh, wow. Sandra. <sighs> Sandra? Come out or I'm coming in. Sorry, Cros. I've been called away once again, probably for the better. You belong with Jean, and we've still got a war to win. I'll always remember our time together fondly. Love, Sandra. You know, I told Colonel Jeff I didn't want leave. It'll be good for you. What's that supposed to mean? It means I think it'll be good for you. You excited to see Jean? And what if it's not the same? Nothing's the same, Cros. Never will be. I doubt the truth. Half of them didn't come home, the other half came back. Never the same. Thanks. The Russians crossed into Germany. How right, close, Buck? Come out! Oh, my job here. Look, up the Oh, crap. He's the SS people. Lights out. They're close. They're really, really close. Oh, no. Goons gave us 30 minutes, then we march. Any idea where we are? Nuremberg! We're in the heart of their fatherland now, boys. Whoever fights monsters should take care not to become a monster. Holy crap. We make a run for it tonight. Get going, I'm right behind you. Don't shoot! No, Buck! Get out of here! No! Oh, they show us too much in the previews. Now I don't even want to watch this one. Oh, that episode had so much going on. Okay, Cross throws himself into it. I get that this is his retelling. And it the war was so long and there was so much, so it's impossible to put everything in this series. I just wish we could have seen a little more of D-Day, but they did it through his point of view, which I get, and shown like how much pressure everyone was under, I'm sure. And I was really happy to see the Tuskegee, Tuskegee, Tuskegee Airmen. I know there's a movie and maybe a series about them too that I would love to watch. It's too bad they're only coming in on this last second to last episode because I like I, I was like I could watch a whole series about this because I have so much to learn but I know they were like a famous group that like changed the tides so I like that we're working together. I'm super worried about the prisoners of war camps and that they're gonna march. I'm super worried about Rosie. I don't know. And then we had like the whole Sandra thing, which I thought was gonna be like a whole thing of like her almost getting caught, but it was just, I think it was just trying to show like all aspects of it, which I, which I like, but I just am like, we need more episodes. <laughs> It's funny because I feel like some people could see this maybe like, oh, that was like not very much action in that episode. I kind of like seeing the POW camp and how just like um, monotonous it is and how they're like breaking and kind of going crazy, but also trying to plan stuff and finding any sliver of hope they can. And that like had to be real, right? Like I'm glad they just didn't put in action for the sake of action, but I feel like we could have seen some action on D-Day and like how they remember they were like we're gonna use you as bait to take out the left waff but then we didn't like see that I don't know whatever all in all I I am really enjoying it and like I said I just wish I'm like how are they gonna how are they gonna end this it's it's a long finale I'm a little scared for it but I think it's gonna be good okay I'm here to watch the finale I literally just rewatched the coming up on this episode <laughs> and I'm already like getting emotional so this is not a great sign okay here we go last one part nine by the first few weeks of 1945 we were closing in on the third Reich from all sides in the west the allies were storming into germany in the east the russians were approaching the oder river the eighth air force flew uncontested we were the true masters of the air bombs away bomb bay doors opening Gosh. Are we ahead? A couple tanks got hit. Yes, sir. On my way. More oxygen bottles or rupture? You only have six in reserve. Roger. Keep an eye on it, Doug. Rockets incoming! I thought they were uncontested. Five seconds to bomb release. Five, four, three, two. Bombs away! Let's get out of here. Look up! Gosh. 
I'm gonna take the ship, okay? Roger. I'm gonna try to get us across the Russian lines where we'll be safe. Yes, sir. Major, left wing is shredded. We're almost there. But it's gonna blow up. She's gonna stall. She's gonna stall. Bail. Hit the alarm and let go. I'm gonna try to keep her level as long as I can. Is there anyone alive in the back? Yeah. Yes, there is. Go, go, go. This is the preview that I saw. He was down and injured. Come on. Yeah. Rosie. Or did they have to land in Berlin? Oh my gosh, it looks so good. East of Odin, Order River between German and Russian lines. Oh my gosh, he's right in the middle. You gotta play dead. Is, he, is his leg broken? There's so many and he's still just shooting him. American! Coca-Cola! We're on the same side. Roosevelt, Stall, and Coca-Cola. Oh, I love him. For now, we need to be at the front gate. We're marching. Go tell the guys. Go, go, yes, go! Sir, got it, got it. 2,300 hours, then we march. They won't say how far for how long. Right, pack it up. It. Let's go. Where are the warmest clothes you got? Where do you think we're going? I don't know. Only take food that will keep. Would have preferred it if the Russians made it here first. You're not thinking of running, are you? You're not thinking of running, are you? Not without you. The, um... Bucky needs a toque. German countryside 20 miles southwest of Sea. They've walked for 20 miles? Oh my gosh. Just on the news on any of them. Or was you other crew? It went down over no man's land east of Berlin. Major, sir. We got wheels up in five and the equipment room's locked. What's going on? Let's go, people! Look alive! Let's go! <laughs> I guess you've never flown over Germany without a parachute, huh? Huh? I don't know, Crosby. Have you? <laughs> We're gonna keep that equipment hut opened and manned until wheels are plus 30 minutes. Yes, Major! Yes, Major! Yes, Major! Yes, Major. Yes, Major. Yes, Major. Yes, Major. Yes, Major. Yes, Major. Don't run, don't run. Do! I like it! Get it closer. Yes. Get it closer. <laughs> Scuttlebutt as we're heading to a train station at first light. Scuttlebutt know where we're going. Just be ready at dawn. This isn't good. They're gonna take us somewhere to kill us, aren't they? Well, I mean, they have had plenty of chances if they really wanted to kill us. Depends on how. Not exactly how we thought, has it? You wish you'd done it differently. Can't say I would have. You? I wasn't planning on getting shot down. You know, I really did believe that if there was only two B-17s left, be you and me flying. Any idea where we are? It's all right, son. How would they know? How would they know he was a Jew? Oh my gosh. We're in the heart of their fatherland now, boys. Are they getting any food and water? I don't like that sound. Gail Clevin. Jesus, I'll be. George. Long way from home. Oh, my God. Only guy I've ever met knows more about baseball than you do. So I'll see if we can find you boys some tents with some fires going. I'm warning you, most of them don't. At Baranovich, uh, for a flight to Moscow. There to England. No. He warns you that the road is going to be very dangerous. Why do we do this to each other? I think I know what this is. <sighs> Man, 
many of these camps, everyone's already dead and burned before we arrived. Our comrades found even bigger camps than this. It's crazy that the soldiers didn't even didn't even know. They didn't even know about the concentration camps. Where are you headed? Are you uh, you headed home? Home, family? I dine a familia. Familia? My daughter, her kinder. He says his family are all dead, uh, buried in his village. To live, one must make choices. Where will, uh, where will he go now? The plane to Moscow is boarding. He says if God exists, he has forgotten him. Not even the earth that covers our bones will remember us. There's just thousands of thousands of people in the snow. In, in, in the... There's little tents. What, what are they going to do? I'm... We leave at 1900 hours. Another night march? But I told them we won't go more than 20 kilometers a night, and they agree. Listen, guys are starting to break out into groups. Look, if we keep it tight, me, you, George, Aaron, you know it's a better chance to move on soon. Keep it to one! <gasps> what? 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 Hey, 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 we told you we had to start marching at night! That's safe! We told you! Look, it's not safe! We make a run for it tonight. Calm down before they put a bullet in your head. There's a forest a few miles northwest. If we make it that far, well, we'll make it that far. Guys, I don't know about this. Oh! Shoot! Don't shoot! You touch one here! No. He is essential! Sergeant! Order your man to release Major Regan. Lars! Lars Leiter! George Bill and Buck I went over that wall. They're separated now. You hear that? Sounds like GMCs. How can they tell which side everyone's on? Looks like they're retreating. Jean, she's pregnant. I'm going to be a father. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, I'm so happy for you, too. I don't know. It's, you know, all this killing we do day in, day out, does something to a guy. Makes him different, not in a good way. <laughs> you know, Rosie, sometimes I wake up, I don't even recognize myself in the mirror. It reminds me of this quote I read at college from Nietzsche. Whoever fights monsters should take care not to become a monster himself. Because if you gaze into the abyss, the abyss gazes right back into you. It's so hard because everyone's just doing what they think is right. We're well, here to fight the monsters, right? Christ. Every soldier, even those yeah, German kids people. in the forest, they... Stop right there! Oh, hey, 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 hey. Americans! Oh, oh. Americans! 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 They look like POWs. All right, at ease. Oh my gosh. They're safe. But all these guys... Bucky can tell them where they are and we can go rescue them. Another camp. Bob, find a place to get them out of the weather. Yes, sir. Thanks for the lift, guys. Are they back? <laughs> Major! <laughs> Welcome back. Crosby, they still got you at this dump. You are new? Back, sir! Roger, welcome back! It's been like a year, right? Gentlemen. I kept saying I expect him back. You know, my, my buddy's just MIA. We gotta get him back. Operations was kind of hoping you wouldn't mind flying on this mercy mission I was just telling you about. Should be a milk run, but can't be sure what the Germans are gonna do. Don't make him fly, please. Nice to get behind the yoke again. What if something happens and he just got back? That's a P-51. 
and the village are yours. I will hand over my men disarmed in 30 minutes. Dismissed. Yeah! Little Clark, let's get him back. Oh, Major. Major. Boss, let's go feed some people. Yes, sir. Sounds good. Guys, I don't know if we risk this, guys. I mean, we, we need to go. I just want them to get home. I want all of them to get home. What the hell are you doing here? A uh, hundred bucks says you can't think of a better flight engineer. Plus, thought I'd get a kick out of actually flying one of these things. Well, I never had a reason to fly. <laughs> <laughs> How's the view, Kenny? It's so main it. You see the windmills, the, the Netherlands. It's my number one spot. I want to go see the flower fields in the Netherlands. <laughs> Clear up tower, please repeat. Tower. You heard me the first goddamn <laughs> time, Gail. I'll be damned. There to see you. You too. Not still throwing up in there, are you? Good to be back. Yeah. I made a few of those supply drops in the last days of the war. Yesterday morning at 2.41 a.m. It was over. General Schodel, the representative of the German High Command and of Grand Admiral Dönitz, the designated head of the German state signed the act of unconditional surrender of all German land, sea, and air forces in Europe to the Allied Expeditionary Force. The ceasefire began yesterday to be sounded all along the front. First, it felt unreal, impossible. We were going home. You're right away, Major. I better see you at Minton's when I get back. Oh, I'll be there. You can bring the little guy. <laughs> You're gonna be a hell of a father, Cross. You think? I know. I love Rosie. I mean, his story, but also the actor. He's just, he's captivating. They all. It really doesn't feel real. This is it. Controls and seats. Check. Fuel transfer valves and switch. Leaving a lot of good men behind. I'm a brave man. On occasion, the world must confront itself, answer what we are with who we are. I was going home. I just wished more of us were. really, really, 
really hope we don't do this again. Graza. <laughs> His smiling eyes. Wow. Harry and James served as culprits with PTA in every school of their children. <laughs> It's too bad they couldn't have made this before they passed away. Remained on active duty with the Air Force until December 1947 and he drove to the Air Force Reserve. That same year, he moved back to Detroit with his wife, Adele, and became a science teacher. Jefferson retired from the Air Force to serve as Lieutenant Colonel. He was a founding member of both the Detroit National Chapters of the Tuskegee Airmen. He passed away in June 2022. He was 100 years old. Richard Macon. Oh, his neck injury. Megan joined us right now in Detroit and began his career as a public school teacher. Rosie was trained to pilot B-29 specific with the Japanese surrender in August 1945. After the war, Rosie helped prosecute Nazi war criminals at the Nuremberg trials. He interrogated leading figures in the German military high command, including Field Marshal Hermann Goring, the head of the Luftwaffe. Buck made in the Air Force and served both the Korean and Vietnam Wars, he retired for a colonel. Clement earned both an MBA from Harvard and a PhD from Georgetown University. Just tell me he and Marge got married. Buck married Marjorie Spencer within a month of returning to United States after the war. John Egan was his best man. Buck Egan. Stay in the Air Force after the war. One evening after returning to the United States, he ran into high school at the age of also married a few months later. Colonel Egan flew combat missions during the crew where he eventually became director of Air Force operations for the entire Pacific area. He was working at the Pentagon when he died of a heart attack in 1961. I was so scared for that last episode, but I really, really liked the conclusion. It had some redemption and happy endings and I don't know. Of course, this whole series makes you think about war and your own kids and imagining them having to do something like this and the whole time I just kept thinking about like so many of them didn't get to go home and how horrific war is and why I know that I'm like so privileged and naive about so much and this is just hard for me to imagine why humans kill humans and why countries or leaders feel this need for more power and more land. It's just, the price is too high. I know a lot of people are criticizing this show. I've seen the comments and the reviews that this is no band of brothers and I don't think it was trying to be. Um, this is a different side of the war. These are different stories that uh, needed to be told too. And the thing is, I don't care about like the CGI. I literally didn't even notice that once. I'm just happy that stories are being told, right? And I thought they did it really beautifully. My only wish is that we got more backstory. Like I wanted flashbacks to their home lives or their moms or to Marge even, but they had to do so much in nine episodes. So I don't know. I just, I guess I don't understand the um, bad reviews because they're like, this is boring. And I'm like, this was it for them. This is like, I'm just happy to know it and to know about pilots in the war and I, I didn't even know what a B-17 was before the show, you know? And so I I don't think I could ever be mad at it. If anything, I want, my, my criticism is that I wanted more, more episodes because I would have loved to hear, to see these stories play out more. But I liked seeing the POW experience and the flyer experience and, ah, oh, sorry. I just couldn't, that whole time. I just kept picturing my kids. It's a hard balance when you watch true stories. Like, are we gonna pick apart the dialogue or the acting? And like, of course that needs to be good for it to be engaging. But like, I just wanna see the characters, you know, I wanna. And so when I'm watching this, I'm just putting myself in the shoes of the wives or moms or that's how I'm watching it. I don't, I don't think I'm even making sense, but it had some wonderful, great moments and some really sad moments. And I guess when I watch something like this, I'm just reminded about how many died and how unfair that was. I just made a new friend and her husband is in the Air Force and they have four kids and he's just, he's leaving in a couple weeks to Korea. 
for a year. This is so silly, I'm sorry. I don't know why, I can't stop. But like, he won't see his kids for a whole year. I can't imagine that. And it's just, I'm so grateful for families who do that for us. Okay, I gotta go. Oh my goodness. Thanks for watching.